Since 1986, he has been the medical director of the special Neukirchen Clinic near Munich, where he treats allergic and degenerative diseases according to the principles of nutritional and environmental medicine. His current research involves the investigation of biological redox systems and free radical reactions in the skin. And that is the subject of his lecture today. Please welcome Dr. John Ionescu. Thank you very much, Phil. And <clears throat> uh, I'd like to thank one more time the organizers and the sponsors of this uh, beautiful meeting for inviting me here and allowing me to share our experience in Germany and uh, allowing me after our scientific part to show you uh, some uh, clinical cases before and after integrative therapy approaches and as concerning the aging processes uh, in the skin and as concerning the specific treatment of very difficult skin disorders. So, uh, next slide please. Okay, this question, ladies and gentlemen, it seems it's easy to be uh, answered. So, uh, more difficult is to understand the science behind the right procedure, helping us to slow down an accelerated aging process. And this is a goal of every anti-aging therapy. Uh, the premature aging, as you may see here, is one of many clinical conditions strongly related to an increased production of free radicals and reactive oxygen, mediated oxygen species, uh, mediated disorders from Alzheimer, allergic diseases, atherosclerosis, until psoriasis, premature aging, uh, stroke, and viral infection, and so on. You have this list in your handouts. And uh, we also know that reactive oxygen species are strongly related with the DNA modification, attack, DNA breakage, DNA mutation leading to cancer. They are strongly involved in the respiratory burst of activated phagocytes leading to bacterial killing, and also in all kind of inflammatory processes. There is no skin inflammatory process without a strong generation of free radical in the skin. So it's uh, important uh, just to have a short definition of the free radicals. You may find this in your hand, uh, handouts. We are speaking about highly reactive chemical species carrying an unpaired electron in their outer orbit. The abstract electrons from the surrounding molecules, lipid, proteins, DNA, in order to complete their own electron structure, thus inducing chronic cellular damage. And the free radical theory of aging formulated by Dinam Harman in 1956 postulates that aging is caused by free radical reactions associated with environmental influences, diseases, failures of antioxidative defense, and the intrinsic aging process. But in the same time, it predicts that the lifespan of any organism can be increased by slowing down the rate of initiation of free radical reactions. And this is why we've been so interested in checking the influence of this free radical of all kind of clinical, in all kinds of clinical conditions. You may see here that uh, a large generation of reactive oxygen species and reactive nitrogen species, like the superoxide, hydrogen peroxide, hydroxyl, uh, then the singlet oxygen, the lipid peroxide family, the nitric oxide already discussed by Gary Gordon, and the peroxynitrite. All these free radicals may be rapidly induced in our body through, exogen through endogenic uh, processes like the increased mitochondrial and peroxisome metabolism, oxygen metabolism, an increased caloric intake. Please think every day how much calories you take if you want to, to have a long life xanthine oxidase reactions, increase phase one cytochromes, detoxification processes, ischemia, and so on. And, of course, with a large amount of exogenic compounds or exogenic factors, we can also induce in the body an increased, num increased level of reactive oxygen species. I ionizing radiation, starting with the ultraviolet, ultraviolet, the sun exposure, is dramatically increasing these radicals in the skin. 
um, hyperthermia, smoking, heavy metals, drugs, xenobiotics, but also stenos exercise is strongly generating free radicals in the body and may have deleterious effects, especially in untrained people. Um, on the other side, we know that the DNA attack, as we mentioned before, is <clears throat> one of the most important conditions leading to mutations, strength breakage, and cancer, or also inducing a premature aging. And we can, we are very happy to know since at least 15 years, there's the so-called DNA adducts products, which we may find in urine, detectable by high pressure liquid chromatography, are excellent markers, also in your office, for an accelerating aging process and DNA uh, destruction process. Besides, we also learned that such free radicals are strongly generated and rapidly generated in activated phagocytes, as we may see here. Uh, they are uh, induced or um, mediated enzymatically with participation of this NADPH oxidase, moving one electron on the molecular oxygen and inducing this superoxide radical. In the presence of the superoxide dismutase, we get large amounts of hydrogen peroxide and uh, in the presence of myeloperoxidase, we get a hypochlorous acid, a very important defense line against bacterial and yeast infections. But in the same time, please keep in mind that every inflammatory condition of the skin is also associated with a strong generation of elastase and collagenase, uh, splitting the normal collagen fibers and the elastin fibers and reducing dramatically the firmness of the skin. We also know that such free radical reactions are also a part of the peroxidation, uh, lipid peroxidation, fatty acid peroxidation in inflammatory processes. Um, phospholipids, membrane phospholipids, the presence of phospholipase A2 are <coughs> uh, catabolized and, and uh, degraded to via the cyclooxygenase pathway to prostaglandin and thromboxanes and through the lipoxygenase pathways to leukotriens. All these elements, ladies and gentlemen, are strongly uh, mediators, are strong mediators of inflammations, uh, worsening the skin condition and speeding the aging of the skin structures. We also know that besides these enzyme-mediated reactions inducing uh, uh, strong free radical generation, we have in the body non-enzymic mechanism leading to the generation of very dangerous free radicals, like the hydroxyl radical. And here, as we've heard this morning in the, uh, in the um, presentation of Dr. Babisayev, iron, copper, and other transitional elements play a very, very important role, initiating not only the generation of the hydroxyl radical, but also initiating the lipid peroxidation. To initiate the lipid peroxidation, you need hydrogen peroxide and heavy metals and transitional elements. And this is quite important also for the destructive processes we have in the aging skin exposed to the solar light, to the sunlight, as we'll see later on. And besides this, as I said, you don't have to get nervous uh, with this uh, uh, description of the lipid peroxidation pathway. Nobody has to learn it by heart. We just want to stress out that uh, this hydroxyl radical aggressing and polyunsaturated fatty acid in the, in the membrane, in the cellular membrane, is inducing a, a very dangerous cascade of lipid peroxidation with a formation of peroxyl radical, li uh, lipid hydroperoxide, as discussed this morning by Professor Babisayev. And if you don't have enough antioxidants in the system, like vitamin E, like glucosione here, to block the father, uh, uh, the father splitting of the lipid peroxide in the presence of iron, then you may get either a malone dialdehyde as a final product of lipid peroxidation, irreversible uh, lipid peroxidation uh, in, in, in the membranes, or you are activating again and again and again the destruction and the splitting of the neighbored fatty acids, polyunsaturated fatty acids, destroying within milliseconds entire cellular membranes. And that's why we have to keep in mind that this uh, 
uh, free radicals associated with heavy metals are very, very important uh, factors uh, leading to an accelerated cellular degeneration and accelerated aging. It's important to know that for your office, you may have a quite excellent quantification of the peroxidation process by investigating such final products like the malondialdehyde, like the 4-hydroxynonenal or the isoprostan prostaglandin 2-alpha in the urine of your patients as a marker of the lipid peroxidation of the momentan, of the current lipid peroxidation in these people. Another important marker we have in all patients with skin disorders and also in aging, in aged people, are the large amounts of aldehydes, of aldehydes, uh, which are uh, generated from, the, um, uh, from amino acids, from fatty acids, as we discussed before, the 4-hydroxynonenal and malondialdehyde, from ethanol and methanol detoxification, acetaldehyde and formaldehyde, and also in diabetes through the uh, glucose uh, splitting to amadori bodies and endiols. This concentration of aldehydes, ladies and gentlemen, in our body, it's one of the most significant factors accelerating the aging process. Because these aldehydes, aldehydic groups, as Professor Babisayev mentioned this morning, are blocking protein structure, the amino groups of proteins, are increasing the cross-linking reactions between the collagen fibers, inducing the destruction of the supporting structures of the skin and inducing the puffiness and the sagging of the skin. These reactions are shortly uh, shown here is the condensation between the reducing sugar, the carbonyl, carbonyl groups of the reducing sugars, and the amino groups of the, prote of the amino acids, resulting in a shift base and an amadori product, an amadori product, condensation product, amadori product, which in the presence of iron and oxygen is producing these markers of the glycosylation markers, the carboxymethylizine. Through reactive intermediates, we may have another process without iron participation, leading to the so-called advanced Maillard products, like pyraline, pentosidine, and you may see here that this pentosidine are, is, a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, a cross-reaction, a cross-link product between amino acids from different collagen or other proteins molecules, uh, blocking the biological activities of this protein and inducing dramatic functional changes. Next, please. Here, we stress one more time, this ketoaldehyde stress. We get this increased aldehyde concentration, as you saw before, from glucose, from lipid peroxidation, but also from ascorbates, as we'll see in one second. And this increased ketoaldehyde stress is extremely important for these glycation processes with the functional proteins of the cell. In the membranes, we get, we get these age products, advanced glycosylation end products. And here, you, you may see these cross-linking reactions, these cross-linking uh, products as pentosidine between different protein uh, chains, blocking the normal activity of this protein. This happens in every aging skin. The more we age, the more glycosylating products, the more carbonyl uh, groups in the aging skin, as in the crystalline, as, in the, we discuss, as discussed this morning. We have the same process. We are measuring by liquid chromatography, by uh, gas chromatography in our patients, this, the concentration of acetaldehyde, of methanol, and you may see here as compared with the normal range, how strongly increased 10 times one, one degrees of magnitude we have the accumulation of these aldehydes in older people. Keep this in mind. The aging process is strongly related with this dramatic generation of aldehyde groups blocking the function and the protein functional groups also, isopropanol as alcohol may have very strong increases, and the ultra-toxic methanol with uh, eye toxic effects, retinal toxic effects, is dramatically increased in such people. Glycation processes may also take place starting from the oxidation products of ascorbate, the, the, the hydroascorbate, the hydroascorbate may succeed to the final products irreversible uh, splitting product or may be part of this glico gl protein glycation processes 
leading again to the markers, carboxymethylizine, pentazidine, and other adducts and crosslinks. And this is happening when we have a splitting of the dihydroascorbate in the presence of heavy metals as iron and molecular oxygen. We speak about the so-called auto-oxidation of ascorbate with generation of free radicals. So in the presence of metals, take care with the administration of ascorbate in the presence of heavy metals. Well, we discussed this morning, I think Jennifer told you about the uh, glycosylated hemoglobin as a long-term marker for, uh, for the uh, monitoring of glycosylation processes, but also fructosamine is a good marker for short-term monitoring of these processes. So you can use this in your office just to have an idea of these deleterious side effects. What about the skin? the side effects of these processes in the skin. Can we understand these processes and can we slow down these processes? This is the main topic today. This is a section of the skin which is exposed to two different mechanisms of aging. We speak about the intrinsic aging, the genetically determined aging process, and we speak also about the extrinsic skin aging. You may see here that the genetically determined aging process is characterized through an, by an increased catabolic activity, deficient antioxidant defense according to the genetic polymorphies of every individual, deficient melanin synthesis, genetic polymorphies, deficient detox capacity, different from one patient to the to, from one subject to the other, and decreased hormone, uh, sexual hormone supplies think about the exogen, uh, estrogen deficiency, which are reducing the collagen synthesis after, for instance, after menopause. Lack of exercise is also quite important because it prevents the generation of the adaptive antioxidant response of the body if we don't do any exercise. And to the intrinsic skin aging factors, we can count <coughs> the photo aging, very important, has a major impact on skin appearance the toxic environmental exposure to smoking, industrial exhausts, heavy metals, detergents. Chronic infection inflammatory states are already speeding, all, always speeding the aging process. Inappropriate nutrition with excess of refined carbohydrates, fats, food additives, and so on, and sleep deficiency and stress. Keep in mind <coughs> that these processes are overlapped, is why I'm stressing out here, leading to very complex uh, biochemical reactions in the skin. On the other side, if we consider the biologic effects of the sunlight, we don't have only side effects, no show side effects. We have also some beneficial effects. Production of active, active vitamin D3, ultraviolet B, tanning, immediate or delayed pigmentation, activation of the melanocyte activity. Photoacanthosis, a protective thickening of the epidermis and hyperpigmentation following chronic light exposure. But unfortunately, a chronic sun exposure, a prolonged sun exposure has more adverse side effects like the sunburn, like the polymorphic light reactions, eczema solare, solar actinic elastosis, actinic hyperkeratosis, a very, very spread precancerous condition, skin cancers, like basalioma, epithelioma, and melanoma. And of course, the photoaging characterized through the dryness, deep wrinkles, sagging, loss of elasticity, muscle pigmentation, and telangiectasia. If we have a look on such clinical conditions,